British government says we're going to leave the EU at the end of October, even if we don't get a deal. But if that happens, would a no-deal Brexit bring Britain to a standstill? In this video, we're going to look at the immediate impact of no-deal Brexit in the hours, days and weeks after it happens. Will there be food shortages? Not enough medicine? What about 30-mile traffic jams down near Dover? Will there really be no planes to Europe? And will a hard border lead to violence in Northern Ireland? Or, alternatively, is this all just project fear? Well, we're going to go through the evidence and figure out what's going on. Now, obviously, there would be longer term effects as well. We already talked about that in another video, and you can find the link for that in the description below. But will a no-deal Brexit cause a crisis in the immediate aftermath, in the hours and days after we leave? Well, the answer depends a lot on what happens in Dover on the southeast coast of England. This place is by far Britain's most important port. It's the quickest ferry route to Europe, and it's essential for trading and the economy. Last year, 2.5 million heavy goods vehicles passed through Dover, so between Britain and the EU, along with nearly 12 million passengers and more than 2 million cars. And here's our first problem, traffic jams. At the moment, it takes an average of two minutes for a vehicle to be checked before going on a boat to Europe. But if the UK leaves the EU without a deal, then that could change. Most lorries would suddenly require new paperwork to cross the border, and there'd probably be more checks too. Now, we don't yet know the exact details of what would be required, but in Dover, every second counts and traffic jams can build up quickly. You see, the town is small and there's physically no room for the port to expand. Of course, checks could be done further away from the port, but that would still take time. Scientists at Imperial College London estimate that adding an extra two minutes to the average time spent at the border would lead to tailbacks of nearly 30 miles on the main road to Dover. Much longer delays at the port could lead to congestion across South East England, and that would have an impact on everyone else, like ordinary commuters and emergency services. Now, of course, how bad this is will depend partly on how prepared everyone is and how quickly the port authorities can get lorries over the border. And the government does have a plan called Operation Stack, and that's where one side of nearby motorways will be reserved for lorries to queue up in. But according to the former Director General of Border Coordination at the British Tax Office, there would still be delays, even in a reasonable best case scenario. So whatever happens, it seems likely some delays will occur. And it's just a question of how bad they'll be. And the problems don't end there. In September, MPs made ministers publish their contingency plan, which is the government's reasonable worst case assumptions of what would happen in the event of no deal. It suggests that as many as 85% of lorries may not be ready for EU customs, and drivers could end up waiting up to two and a half days before being allowed to cross the border. The document said the worst disruption could last three months, although delays at Dover could continue much longer. But the French authorities might step in to speed up traffic flow at the Channel ports. That said, it's worth remembering this is the worst case scenario. We won't know exactly how bad it'll be until it actually happens. And that leads us to the second potential crisis point. Lots of people are worried that no-deal Brexit could lead to shortages of food and medicine. And that's mainly because of those traffic jams we talked about in Dover. You see, if it takes ages for lorries to get over the border, that could make it difficult to get vital supplies into the UK. Again, this is a logistical problem. And in theory, there are logistical solutions. Some products can be stockpiled, but others can't be. Some companies may redirect their products to avoid Dover. New paperwork can be prepared. And of course, if traffic jams can be avoided, that would also be a massive help. But the question is, will all that be ready in time? Because the deadline is getting really near. For instance, companies that supply radio isotopes from Europe, which are used to treat some types of cancer, have agreed to fly them into Britain if there's a no-deal Brexit, instead of being shipped via Dover. But a test run earlier this year revealed there were problems with the system. Other medicines could also have severe extended delays, according to the government's own report. However, the government says it will support drug companies by backing a new express freight service for small packages and securing extra capacity on ferries. But so far, the details of these schemes have still not been finalised. And as for food supplies, well, because Brexit is set for the end of October, 
Some retailers have warned that their warehouses will already be stocked full of fresh food ready for Christmas. So they won't have very much extra space left over to stockpile for Brexit as well. In fact, the British Retail Consortium has said October is probably the worst time to face a no-deal Brexit and that the availability and cost of fresh food will be affected. In a worst case scenario, the government admits that the supply of fresh food will decrease. But that doesn't mean there'll be a shortage of food overall. The problem is just for specific types of fresh food, which could also lead to some price increases. So that's likely to impact on poor, elderly and vulnerable people the most. The same is true for medicine. Some things will be affected, other things won't be. All in all, the government says, in a worst case scenario, there would be significant disruption to the medical supply chain for up to six months. Partly, that's because transporting medicine is often a tricky and complicated business. Like, some things have to be held at a controlled temperature. Others might have specific regulations and checks. Another potential crisis that some people are worried about is air travel. At the moment, the UK is part of an EU-wide agreement that allows planes to land in different countries. But if we have a no-deal Brexit, Britain will not automatically stay part of that scheme. And there were concerns that hundreds of planes could literally be grounded because they're banned from flying to the EU. This was a legitimate concern, but a draft agreement about air travel has now been reached. It says that if there's a no-deal Brexit, normal flights will be allowed to continue between Britain and EU countries. Now that's only a draft agreement, of course. So there's no rock-solid guarantee and the agreement only lasts for five months, after which it will probably either be extended or renegotiated. So, in the immediate aftermath of a no-deal Brexit, it looks like most planes flying between Britain and the EU should be OK. Huh. Now, there are complications involved for airline companies. For instance, EasyJet has had to set up a new company based in Austria in order to carry on flying between EU countries after Brexit. So, this arrangement provides basic cover but it could still throw up problems and complications. And remember, this is only a draft agreement, and we're not sure how long it will last for beyond March 2020. And according to the government's planning documents, there could be delays and disruption in airports, the Channel Tunnel and ports, thanks to increased immigration checks. Finally, there's the Irish border problem, which is possibly the most controversial part of Brexit. Northern Ireland is part of the UK, but some people have always wanted it to be part of the Republic of Ireland. And that disagreement, along with religious divides, has led to decades of violence and terrorism. Eventually, in 1998, a peace deal was signed, known as the Good Friday Agreement. Since then, a big part of keeping the peace in Northern Ireland has been the fact that there's no physical infrastructure on the border, unlike in the past. There's no checkpoints, there's no passport control. You can drive from one country to the other, and barely even notice the difference. The problem is, with no deal Brexit, Britain will leave the EU single market and customs union. And that means new stop checks and fees could apply to any products being taken over the border between Britain and the Republic of Ireland, which is part of the EU. And if that happens, there are serious concerns it would bring a return to violence. Police think dissident Republicans would see border posts as a symbol of British rule and a target for attacks, plunging Northern Ireland back into violence. There's a big question here though, that's not really been answered yet. What kind of physical infrastructure would there be on the border under a no-deal Brexit? It seems unlikely that a huge border wall would be built, like the one President Trump wants between the US and Mexico. And British politicians have repeatedly promised that they will never put any new infrastructure on the border at all. The EU, on the other hand, have said a hard border would be inevitable because they need to protect the integrity of their single market. But what does that mean? Border checks? Passport control? Some experts believe we could avoid having much infrastructure by using technology, business agreements and conventional policing instead. That's called a smart border. But people disagree about whether it would really work effectively. Perhaps the most likely outcome would be a heavily increased police presence around the border with most border checks carried out not actually on the border itself. The problem is, the smallest thing could trigger violence in this area, and potentially something as little as a temporary police stand at the border could become a target. What's more, the government report that was leaked in August says that plans to avoid a hard border 
are likely to prove unsustainable because of economic, legal and biosecurity risks. Ultimately, if there was no deal, then the UK, Ireland and the EU would all be under a lot of pressure to try and figure out a long-term solution that satisfies everyone as quickly as possible. Right, so those are some of the main short-term issues that people worry could bring Britain to a standstill in the event of a no-deal Brexit. But remember, this is Brexit, so it's a really complicated issue, and there could be loads of longer-term effects, like how new tariff rules could have an impact on stuff you buy in the shops. And you can find links to our videos on those topics below. And please hit the like button and subscribe for more of these videos. And don't forget, let us know what you want us to talk about on Brexit in the comments below.